Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. He was a husband, father, and grandfather shot to death in front of his home on Detroit's east side. Off the top at 11, what happened to Andre White? It's a question that has haunted his family since they first learned of his murder back on May 1st. Local 4's Pamela Osborne spoke with his widow tonight. And Pam, it sounds like they're doing everything they can to keep his story fresh in people's minds. They really are. Tracy White has been putting up flyers. She even put up a billboard with her husband's image as well as his name so that people know what happened to him and hopefully come forward with information about his murder. Everything is just totally different for me. My whole life is turned upside down. It wasn't the one year wedding anniversary Tracy White had imagined. Instead of celebrating with husband Andre by her side, she had this, a cardboard cutout of the man she loved and lost two months ago. This is really tearing this family apart. Like we need closure. It's killing us, our family, period. Andre was Timothy Patton's youngest brother. He and the rest of the family know very little about what happened May 1st, just that Andre was with a few friends, steps away from his home on Cheris Street when he was shot and killed. Things haven't been the same since. Fun loving guy, you know, cared about his kids and grandkids and everything. So, you know, and we had to lose him this way, you know, broad daylight. Um, it just don't make no sense. The family put up a billboard and it plastered his face and story all over nearby businesses with the hope that someone will come forward. And the only thing we just asking for is closure for my sister-in-law, you know, for all of us, you know, because he didn't, he didn't deserve this. You know, he didn't deserve this at all for someone to just take his life like that. Early this evening, I did reach out to DPD for an update on this investigation on the family's behalf. They told me detectives were gone for the day, but I did speak with Tracy again this evening. She said she got a phone call from a captain in the homicide unit. They are scheduled to meet to discuss his case tomorrow. Meantime, anyone with information should give Detroit police a call. Reporting live outside of police headquarters, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. I hope so. Okay, Pam, thank you. Let's turn our attention to the weather because we have more rain headed our way. That's right. Andrew's tracking those showers and uh, whether the morning commute will be impacted, Andrew. Looks like it will, Kimberly and Devin, especially when we first start to wake up between 5 and 7 o'clock in the morning with some more rain moving in from the west and northwest. Currently, we are dry, partly to mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures in the 70s in some areas, including 70 over in Pontiac, 72 at Metro Airport, 75 warm degrees over at City Airport. Elsewhere, we're seeing cooler 60s, and we cool off nicely tonight with overnight lows in the 50s and low 60s. For now, it's 72 over at Metro Airport. Visibility is looking good, comfortable with dew points that are in the 50s and a wind at 7 miles per hour. Here's some of the rain, including thunderstorm activity closer to Minneapolis. These showers arrive first, just as we're waking up on your Wednesday. And so the morning commute could be impacted. Don't be surprised by some wet conditions heading back to work or trying to take the kids over to summer camp. Just factor on a little extra time. Mainly light to moderate showers, nothing too heavy, at least in the morning. Temperatures down to 63. But more showers are possible, even thunderstorms later in the day. More on that in minutes. All right, Andrew, a Detroit man charged with making the straw purchase of the gun that killed Officer Lauren Kortz is going to remain in jail. Prosecutors say 26-year-old Sheldon Thomas bought a gun that he gave to 19-year-old Imani Davis. Police tell us Davis used that gun to kill Officer Kortz before he was shot dead by police. Thomas will remain in jail until his next court date, which is July 25th. If convicted, he could face 10 years in prison and a $250,000 bond. Meanwhile, in East Point, a crowd gathered today outside Action Impact, where the gun was sold to Thomas. They came to protest the sale of Draco rifles, and they're calling for stricter gun control following the death of Officer Courts. We need ATF to take a look at the records of Action Impact to see if there are any other straw purchases that have happened. And if somebody has a crystal ball that could help, help us with this, or if you can give me some better ideas, I'm an open book. The owner says his store will no longer sell Draco firearms. He also believes by targeting gun shops, protesters are taking responsibility away from people who use guns in illegal ways. Just hours from now, the University of Michigan's Board of Regents will announce its next president. The new president will take over from interim president Mary Sue Coleman. 
She was brought back to campus in January to replace Mark Schlissel, who was fired by the board for allegedly having an inappropriate relationship with a subordinate employee. The Board of Regents is scheduled to meet tomorrow at 1 p.m. If the election were held today, a new local four Detroit News poll suggests Governor Whitmer would be headed for a second term. The race will presumably tighten, but the results also show the Republican candidates have a lot of work to do before the primary. Republicans vote for Republicans, Democrats vote for Democrats, but independents make decisions in Michigan. And that is why pollster Richard Zuba's latest numbers hold promise for Gretchen Whitmer. 55% of those polled approve of the job she's doing, nearly 20 points higher than her fellow Democrat in the White House. She's got an approval rating with independence of 61%. That's a strong approval rating from, from a state where independents make the decision of who's going to be the governor. Now, it is a long way to Election Day in November, but it is no time at all before the primary, and that's why it feels like the Republican field remains scrambled. Not one of them have hit the 50% threshold in name ID yet. Um, I think it's fair to ask what the hell have they been doing? You are three weeks away from primary day, and... Over half the voters don't know who you are yet. In fact, Zuba notes many Republican voters haven't heard of the Republican candidates, and they'll be the ones making the decision come August 2nd. Head to head right now, Ryan Kelly fares best against Whitmer. She beats him by about 8%. Whitmer is ahead of Tudor Dixon by about 10 points. In the race for attorney general, our poll has incumbent Dana Nessel leading the presumed Republican nominee Matt DiPerno by about seven points. Nessel has the advantage. Uh, she is both the incumbent. I think she is far better funded right now than DiPerno is. And I think she has the advantage of Roe v. Wade. Yeah, Zuba says the poll shows those favoring abortion rights in Michigan appear poised to be difference makers, especially in races like for Attorney General. You can head to clickondetroit.com for more of our Local 4 Detroit News poll results. Over the years, the city of Detroit has been on the kind of national list the city might not necessarily want to be on. Is that putting it kindly? <laughs> that is not the case tonight. You're right. How about this? Detroit just one of five American cities to be on Time Magazine's Greatest Places list, which ranks the top 50 international destinations to explore. Jason Colthorpe joins us with reaction from Detroiters and how the city got to this point. Guys, this is a great example of how different Detroit is. You know, years ago, this area here would have been six lanes of traffic outside of City Hall. Now it's a green space, it's a park, it's a lunch destination, and several nights a week, it's a dance party. Come to Detroit and enjoy date night salsa, yeah! We know Detroiters love and appreciate their city, but now Time Magazine has co-signed, anointing Detroit among 2022's world's greatest places. No, it's not surprising to me. Detroit is a wonderful city to live in. It's a wonderful city to work in, and it's a wonderful city to play in. Detroit's newfound glory, as Time calls it, notes not just its progress, but what's to come. New restaurants like Midnight Temple and Bassan set to open and those coupled with places to stay like the Cambria Hotel. Oh I love the water and I love to eat so the food is amazing. So we're trying to go to all different restaurants every week and everything is amazing. Detroit is a place everybody want to be. I think it's such a validation of the things we're saying which is Detroit is an amazing place. Claude Molinari of Visit Detroit says recognition like this plus overseas investment to attract tourists is paying off. When the NFL draft chose, the National Football League chose us, when, you know, other major events chose us, those are all differentiators and a positive. And certainly being named one of the top 50 destinations in the world, I think that speaks to how far we're coming and where we're going. You don't have to be from Detroit to appreciate Detroit. And the city is on top. Stop playing. Let's go. And we down here partying with you. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to party with me, right? Uh, by the way, that list, quite impressive when you talk about the 50 destinations. We're talking about places like the Galapagos Islands, the Great Barrier Reef, Valencia, Spain, Sao Paulo, Seoul, the Arctic. 
You also won't get cars going by, you know, booming base in the Arctic, by the way. Just an impressive listing. Kim, I know you're going to ask, so I'll just tell you now. Salsa dancing on Tuesday nights, ballroom dancing Friday nights. <laughs> well, I was going to say, we, we'd love to talk to you more, but apparently you've got a date to keep here now <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> with, the, with the friends yet yeah, tonight. <laughs> they were great. There's a lot. Yep. Love it. Yeah. Love it, Jason. All right. Well, thank you. And